Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to May's new releases. Yes, I know, it's already, I don't know, 9th of May or something, uh, or the 10th even. No, it's the 9th of May, but still, May is going on. And even though most of the books I will present you released in May have been already released on the 4th of May, that doesn't matter. That only means you can buy them immediately if you are interested. Anyway, for those of you who might be new, and I have quite a couple of new uh, subscribers, thank you very much for finding my channel and subscribing. Um, each month I look at the new releases that come out uh, in that particular month, and then I choose a couple that I personally find interesting, um, and I share them with you. And as always, we start the new releases with general fiction and a debut novel at this this time. If you're following my channel, you know that I'm always looking for new authors, that I try to read at least one or two debut novels each month, not necessarily debuts released in that month, could be a debut from 10 years ago, uh, but still, I'm also trying to find authors now, published now, and uh, debut uh, uh, novels that are published now. Too much information. Um, this uh, month's uh, debut novel is by an American author, and I don't want to butcher the name, so I will look that up, Anjali and Jetty. Um, the Parted Earth, and this was published already on the 4th of May. And Jetty worked as an, uh, a lawyer and then as a journalist. She has published a collection of essays about identity and um, heritage, but this is her first novel. Um, and it is set partly in India and partly um, in, in the US, and we it's a multi-generational a uh, tale f spanning from 1947 around the partition between India and uh, Pakistan um, and the present day. So it's about 70 years something. Um, and the core um, person um, is Vija um, um, and his family, his mother um, and the granddaughter not the daughter he has now in the US, who is now 40 years old and who goes looking for her missing father, so to speak, a father who abandoned her and her mother. She also finds her uh, now 80-something-year-old grandmother, and she uncovers the mystery of, you know, why her father left her and her mother, uh, what happened uh, to her uh, grandmother's lover, Vijay's father, who also disappeared. A lot of disappearing men in this book. I'm, I'm particularly drawn, I, I was particularly drawn to this book, first of all, because it's a debut novel, but also because it is set at least partly or tackles um, the partition, India Pakistan partition. And that's something that I know very little uh, about. I read a couple of Pakistani uh, books um, last year, maybe one or two, but I still, I'm still feel that I need to read more about this uh, particular uh, setting in time and place. So when I saw that this book came out and it is about the partition, at least, you know, not, not only, but at least partly, partly about the partition. Um, I wanted to include this book in my video for the new releases, General Fiction, the debut novel. Next up, we have historical fiction, kind of also crime fiction. I could have also put that in crime fiction, but historical fiction. And again, I will uh, look up the name, so not to butcher anything, Nadifa Muhammad, uh, The Fortune Man, which will come out on the 27th of May. Um, Nadifa um, Muhammad is um, an England-based, Somali-born author, um, born in 1981, and she has already, I think this is her fourth book, I mean, born in 81, she's just 40 years old, but I have never read her, so I just came across this one and it sounded fascinating. It's set um, in Cardiff uh, in 19, let me check, I think 1952. Um, yes, indeed, Cardiff's in the Tiger Bay, Cardiff's Tiger Bay, 1952. And you have all kinds of people uh, from Somali and West Indy, from the West Indy sailors. So it's a kind of the bustling 15 uh, uh, port town. Um, and the main character 
um, is called Mahmoud, um, and he is, you know, a father, but also petty criminal, and the smooth talker. Um, and the, the story or the premise of the story is that there is a murder and uh, uh, Mahmoud, for one reason or the other, uh, is implicated, even though he is innocent. And then the story uh, takes off from there. Um, I like these kind of stories with this kind of premise. Uh, but I've also, I also was drawn to the book because of the setting, uh, the 1950s, and then, um, you know, this this. Tiger Bay, uh, Cardiff's Tiger Bay, uh, with this international port kind of atmosphere. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I felt that this sounds good. And the praise that I saw for uh, the author's previous work uh, made me want to include it in the category historical fiction. And did I say it will come out 27th of May? Yes, I think I did. So if you're into a historical fiction, uh, you might find this one interesting. Next, we move on to nonfiction, and I have two books uh, in that category. And the first one is a graphic memoir by Alison Bechdel, um, my, The Secret to My Superhuman Strength. I should probably, you know, know the title of the books before. I talked to you, The Secret to Superhuman Strength, yes, and it was published already on the 4th of May. Um, Alison Bechdel, you probably all know the Bechdel test. Uh, she wrote a, a, also a graphic memoir um, in which she uh, established that test, especially for movies, uh, whether or not women are treated in you know, a form that makes them human. Um, is there more than one woman? Do they actually talk to each other? about something other than men. You you probably all know the Bechdel test, but I will leave a link to a YouTube video, a very short one in which it's explained nevertheless. So I'm I'm a fan of Alison Bechdel anyway. Um, and this uh, graphic memoir is about her obsession uh, with exercise and fitness. Now, I'm not obsessed with exercise and fitness, on the contrary, and I wish I were at least a little bit obsessed with it. So maybe this one, would be good for me? I don't know. But that's the reason uh, I picked it. And the second choice uh, for nonfiction, for those of you who follow my channel for a, a, a bit, might not be a surprise, it's the third part in Deborah Levy's um, Living Autobiography Real Estate. And it will come out, um, let me check, uh, 13th of May. So the, the you you might know Deborah Levy. I'm sure you know Deborah Levy for the fiction she wrote, Hot Milk, for instance. But she also wrote quite short books uh, called Living Autobiography. And The Cost of Living was one. Uh, Things I Don't Want to Know was the second one. And this is the third part. And I absolutely loved the first two parts. So when I saw that the uh, third part uh, would come out in May, I immediately included, wanted to include it in this video because I want to share it with you. If you haven't read the first two parts, please do. It's fantastic. Her, uh, It's not an autobiography in the sense of, you know, biographical data. And on this date, I did that. And then uh, the next year, it's, it's uh, reflections on certain themes in her life at that moment. Uh, and she is such an intelligent and um, generous uh, mind that it's just an, an immense pleasure to read her. So I don't know what kind of uh, reflections um, she will focus on now, but I don't care. I just want to read the book, uh, Real Estate, coming out on the 13th of May. Next uh, up is crime fiction. Um, and I just had to include this book. I don't know whether it's any good, but I don't really care to... Be, no, that's not true. I, it's not that I don't care, but I, I want to read it, uh, even if all of you tell me it's no good, and that's Stacey Abrams' uh, While Justice Sleeps, which will come out uh, on the 11th and the 25th of May. I think 11th is US and 25th is UK. Um, Stacey Abrams, of course, you know, one of the most brilliant and important politicians in, in the US at the moment. Uh, she gets things done. Um, I, I, I admire her immensely, uh, her political work, but she is also a writer. She, under the um, pen name Selena Montgomery, she wrote um, a trilogy 
or, or three books, quite steamy romance books, which will be republished um, uh, this year. And now, obviously, uh, she ventured into crime. Um, and the premise of the book is that you have a Supreme Court justice um, uh, who slips into a coma and his uh, law clerk, a, a young woman, uh, is given power of attorney by him before he slipped into the coma, obviously, and then plot ensues from there and all kinds of high profile cases and political shenanigans. It, it sounds really interesting. And hey, it's Stacey Abrams. What, what, what more do you want? So I, uh, if you have never read um, her, her romance books, I can highly recommend those. If you are into romance, and like I said, quite steamy romances at that. Um, and I'm really, really curious to see what she does um, in the crime novel genre. And as always, we end the new releases with sci-fi, the you know, dystopian fantasy, kind of that 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 genre, speculative fiction, if you uh, want to call it that. And my pick for May is Rivers Solomon, Sorrowland, which was published last week. Um, so it's already out. Now, Rivers Solomon, you might uh, have heard of them. Um, they are a black, uh, non-binary American author um, writing, yeah, literary fiction with a dystopian twist, a little bit gothic, horror, sci-fi. It's hard to categorize, and I think that's the strength, strength of those books. Um, and the premise from this new one, Sauron Land, is no different. We have a dystopian future, I would say. You have this close compound, um, and um, the main protagonist, an albino woman called Vern, she escapes this society to live in the woods where she gives birth to twins, and then she tries to keep herself and her children alive. Um, that sounds, you know, not too weird for um uh, for dystopian uh, fiction or uh, speculative fiction but knowing uh rivers um uh, they probably will do something quite unexpected with it um i don't love all of their work i have to say sometimes i struggle especially if it's more to the leans on the gothic because that's just not my thing but i'm certainly interested uh and the book coming out now in May, I think would also be a perfect pick uh, for June, for Pride Month. Uh, there is the Queer Readathon going on from the 6th to the 12th June. So if you are looking uh, for uh, a, a book in the sci-fi um, speculative fiction new release, then this one, Sorrowland, might be a good pick for Pride Month. Anyway, so these were my choices, my picks for new releases in the month of May. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm looking forward to your comments as always. Let me know whether there are any new releases in May that you are in particular uh, um, interested in or you know excited about. Um, I hope you're having a good reading week and I'll see you all soon in the next one.